Here's another probability question for us to work. Suppose a population has a mean of 30 and a variance of 25. If a sample size of 100 is drawn from the population, what is the probability that the sample mean will be larger than 31? So this is a typical kind of problem in unit two where we're always being asked about probability. Kind of have to stop and think about what this one might be. So I do see that I get a mean and a variance. Um, it appears that my um, random variable here is continuous. Here I've got a nice numerical value here. I believe it's continuous. And um, also, um, I have a sample size here of 100 and so forth. So let's just catalog what we know to help us understand exactly what kind of probability question this is. So I, as I read it, I see that I have a mean of, a population mean of 30. I have a variance, assuming it's still with the population, so sigma squared of 25. I have a sample size of 100. And they want to know what's the probability that the sample mean will be larger than 31. So that's x bar for sample mean and greater than 31. So with all the clues I've been given, I see um, that one of the big clues I see here is that I was given a sample size, which has been different than some of the other problems we've worked in recently. And I don't want to know the probability that x is greater than something or less than, but a sample mean x bar. So these two extra facts here are telling me that I'm probably going to end up doing a sampling distribution of means. Now there's one other thing I need to check. Nothing in my problem mentions normal distribution or normal model. We don't have any of those assumptions, but we're lucky that if those assumptions aren't directly given to us in the text of the problem, we, we were given that we have 100 so we need more than 30 um, in those cases, and we aren't for sure what the population distribution is. We've got an easy 100, plenty in, this, in the world of sample size in order to do the sample distribution for means. So I'm going to need to compute and kind of right size my standard deviation here for this situation. So you do that by taking your population standard deviation and dividing by the square root of n. Now, if I look above, I have n, uh, but I don't have sigma. I have sigma squared. So I'm going to come over here and do some sort of margin work. I have the variance. And, you know, we want sigma to the first power. So in order for us to go from variance down to standard deviation, we're going to need to square root both sides here. And we get, or you can square root in your mind if you've got a nice command of your perfect squares here, sigma is 5. All right, so I can come back over here and put 5 there and divide by the square root of 100. Well, that's going to be 5 divided by 10 once I evaluate the square root of 100, or 0.5. So this here, let's make an emphasis, this is the standard deviation we're going to use when we go visit the normal calculator, is this 0 0.5, the one that's been um, converted to the right size given that they're using a sample size of 100. So let's get to our guru. Here we are in our guru. Let me open up the probability simulation pane. We'll click on probability drop down, choose probability calculator and continuous. Leave the bubble here at values to probability. The default as it's been is normal. We'll put our population mean there. If you notice there, it says mean. It also has that mu, Greek symbol mu next to it. We're going to put our, our adjusted standard deviation here, which was 0 0.5. A 
it said greater than 31, so we're going to choose above. And then our sample mean goes here at 31, because simply that's where we're going to draw a line in the model and shade above is at the value 31. So we'll click here and we get our probability. It's 0 0.02275 right there in the gray bar. Um, if we want to take a quick peek at it, we can look at a graph. And we can see it there. There's our um, standard D our mean at 30. Our standard deviation was a half. So you can see these tick marks are kind of nice and conveniently half. So they're actually the distance of a standard deviation. And then the area above 31 in that yellow region is quite small, which corresponds to our probability being at 0 0.02275. Hope this was helpful.